Shall we? Sure. Okay. Shall I? Yeah, I'll let you <laughs> set the tone. Hey folks, welcome to the Tubby Tabby channel. We are here for our first Q&A ever. I'm Leah. I'm Eli. And we are the makers of soap at Tubby Tabby Soaps. And this is our first time on camera, so you get to see our beautiful visages today. Mm -hmm. And Eli and I are going to answer some questions that people have sent through our various social media and YouTube and email and all of that stuff. So if you want to get your question on a future Q&A, because we are planning to do more Q&As in the future, then you can email them to us at hello at tubbytabby.com or you can write to us through Facebook, uh, Twitter, anywhere at all that we have an account. We probably even catch it in a comment. On That's the true. I'm just going to do the first question, I guess. Sure. Do what you want you me think? to ask and you answer? Or? Oh, like interview style. Yeah. Okay. Very official looking. Very official. Ellen from Ottawa asks, what got you into soap making? I think largely YouTube got us into soap making, actually. Yeah. Leah approached me and was like, hey, babe, how about we you make our own soap out of like wasted cooking oils and stuff? Because yes. she's very thrifty and eco-conscious like that. And I was like, I don't know. I don't want to burn my hands online. It's really terrifying. I don't think I can do this. And then you started watching soap making videos. Yeah, we started watching like soap making videos on YouTube. And I was like, it wasn't like on purpose that I was desensitizing you to the idea, but I think I sort of gradually desensitized you to the idea. And you were like, this looks pretty cool. Like, I think I want to make soap. Well, you, so You started showing me people doing cute, nerdy soaps and food shaped <laughs> soaps and really cute things. So yeah, it's different. Like if you're making something that's like a soap shaped, like a slice of watermelon, it's a lot cuter than if it's like just a, a, like a plain facial soap or something. Right. So after that, we basically decided, okay, let's give this a go. We're going to like make soaps for our buddies for Christmas. I think it was our first ever soap. So we like, you know, October, we get ready, we make our soap and then we like gave it as gifts and stuff around Christmas. And like literally everyone after that, it was just coming up to us and being like, oh my God, your soap is amazing. Where do we get your soap? I think it just kind of went from there. Yep. Yeah. And the reality is that we had all these ideas we wanted to do, all these cute things, and there's no way we could keep all of them to ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> We would just be living in a house like made of soaps. Like the walls are just soaps stacked on top of each other. Either giving it away, which would be a really expensive hobby if you're making like a thousand soaps in a year, or we had to start selling it. So we sell it. Iris on YouTube asks us, why are so many of your soaps unscented? Well, sometimes we forget to put fragrances <laughs> in designs. Oh my God. I did it again, babe. It just occurred to me right now. Guess we're making two batches. One scented, one not. I feel personally attacked by this relatable content. I didn't say anybody's <laughs> name. You added yourself on that one. I think it really started with the all natural soaps. We didn't necessarily have a lot of essential oils at the time or didn't know how to use essential oils at the time. And so we we're like, well, this is the best way to keep it fully natural for people who are interested in that. Yeah, and also certain complex designs we wanted to do, but we weren't sure how uh, essential oils would affect it. People seemed interested in buying cute, unscented soaps, which makes a lot of sense. Like if you can't deal with fragrances, synthetic or otherwise, you kind of stuck with bland soap and I don't know, that gets a little tedious and boring, I would think. Yeah, and like in the age of COVID particularly, because we ended up having to go almost 100% online. If nobody can stand in front of the soap and actually pick it up and hold it and smell it, then they don't know what it's gonna smell like. So I think a lot of people are gravitating more towards unscented stuff now anyway, because they're like, at least I know that it doesn't smell like something I don't like. Probably so. for gifting, especially. We, yeah. We sold a lot of our unscented rainbow soaps over the Christmas period. We ended up so selling everything we had practically at Christmas. Like we completely sold out of the rainbow stuff. We totally sold out of a ton of the different soaps, like the unicorn poop, all sorts of stuff that was unscented. So we ended up having to, to make up a bunch more of that. We've actually ended up remaking the unscented soaps more 
I think, than we have the scented soaps. Yeah. Because people know what to expect. In-person markets too, sometimes they request that we not have a lot of scented soaps because if anyone's ever been to a mall that has a Lush in it, like you can just follow your nose to the Lush. You don't even have to look at like the directory. You can just sort of be like, oh, it's there. And so if you're someone who's really sensitive to, to fragrance, you can't even be at like a fair with someone who does bath and body products. There's a million reasons actually, but like, yeah. we still love smelly things. We make lots of smelly ones. We just make lots of not smelly ones too. It might've been the winter wonderland soap or something, but I remember saying in one of the videos, like, I swear to God it's happened that people have like gotten high off the fumes of fragrance oils. Cause when you're making soap, it is stinky in here. <laughs> like it is really intense. Russell asks, why are your recipes given in percentages rather than cups, tablespoons, etc.? That's actually a really good question. When you do a soap recipe, because you don't know how big a batch someone's gonna make, loaf molds aren't standardized really. Little individual molds aren't really standardized. So like if somebody's gonna have a different size mold than you, then they might have to change the recipe because they know like my mold holds a like a kilogram of oils or half of what mine does or whatever. So if you have it in percentages, it's easier to convert, but always recipes are gonna be in grams or, or ounces. Like like if you're American, usually it's ounces, I think. Weight. Anyway. Weight in some in some way or another, because if you don't do it by weight, then the way that somebody measures a cup of like coconut oil is gonna be completely different from like how this person over here measures a cup of coconut oil. So with something like soap, where you have a particular ratio of lye to oils to make sure that it's safe in the end, doing it by weight means that you can't have those differences in measuring. A hundred grams is a hundred grams. No mm -hmm. matter who does it, it's a hundred grams. Yeah. And it's more, it's more, it just comes down to precision really. And even if you did a recipe in percentages and used volume, which is like cups or milliliters and or that sort of thing, everything has a different weight and a different density. So it's gonna fill your cup differently. Whereas the weight is that a classic rhyme, like what's heavier, a pound of bricks or a pound of feathers. Right. They're both- A this, pound. A pound. It's just probably the feathers is a bigger volume. It's a humongous bit. volume. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> My turn? Yeah. Chen from YouTube asks, why do you have to use specific oils in your recipes? Can't I substitute something I have on hand? The reason that people use the oils they do is that each oil has a different property or different properties. So for example, coconut oil is very cleansing, whereas olive oil is very mild. So people tweak what oils and what amount they want based on the properties they want to their bark. So if you were to substitute one of the oils we use, say can canola oil for the coconut oil, you'd end up with a different kind of bar. And not only that, but different oils saponify differently. They need different amounts of lye. So you have to recalculate the amount of lye and water that you end up using because if you use the same one, you might end up with too much lye in the end or too little lye in the end. So you either have a really harsh soap that kind of like hurts your skin or you have a soap that doesn't stick together well enough. So We've actually had one of those where we had faulty lye for whatever reason one day and it just was not active anymore or whatever. And I made this big, beautiful loaf of the candy cane soap and I was so pleased with it. And I like put it together. I was like, yeah, I nailed it. Straight layers, everything. And a day later, it was still the consistency of like Play-Doh. And I was so confused. I was like, what is going on? What had happened was that most of the lye was not active. So I just basically had this huge mound of oil that a tiny bit of lye was trying to turn into soap. So it mostly was just like solid room temperature oil with a bit of soap mixed in. It was just really nasty. <laughs> so I ended up having to actually rebatch that, um, which is quite a process. We couldn't sell that one. So if you have too little lye, it's also a bad thing. There are calcul all kinds of calculators online. So if you are gonna substitute and you're not so much worried about like the property, plug it into that. You know, you have to, or else you're just gonna end up with the wrong amount of lye and it can either be dangerous or a waste of your time. Yeah. Money. <laughs> so I guess summary is that you can substitute oils, throw it into a lye calculator and just realize that it's not gonna turn out the same as our soap. Yeah, that's a good summary, I like that. Sophia asks, why do you use surfactants in your shampoo bars? Say that word 10 times fast. Surfactants? Sur surfactants. 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 Surface 
Active agents, I think is what it's short for or something like that. Surfactants. Anyway, why do we use them in our shampoo bars? Because yeah. shampoo and soap are not the same thing, which a lot of people don't understand and we're never told, but soap and shampoo are actually completely different things. Soap is actually technically a salt. It's an alkali and it cleans because it's alkaline. It's able to bond with things, take dirt out of stuff. It's got like one end that's like, it loves water and one end that loves dirt and oil and all that stuff. So it'll wash when you use it with water. Surfactants are just completely different things. Yeah. And basically they do clean. They also like soap will grab like one end water, one end, you know, the oil from your hair or the dirt from your hands, whatever. But they aren't soap and they aren't made using an alkali like lye. They're made out of usually vegetable oils and so on, but they have a pH that is much more neutral. And when you wash your hair, if you put something really alkaline in it and you can check out our shampoo bars are great. Eli's beautiful hair mm -hmm. is washed with our shampoo bars every day and mine, but you know, my hair's a mess today. When you wash your hair, if you have a really alkaline soap that you're putting on your hair, it actually opens up the protective barrier on your hair strands and makes them sort of like stand upright. So if you ever have that like sticky feeling almost when you run your fingers through your hair, it's because it's not smoothed down. So in order to do that, you have to have something that's more like a neutral pH. You can't do that with soap because if you change the pH of soap to a neutral pH, it falls apart. It's not soap anymore. It, it ceases to be soap. Basically you have to use these surfactants if you want to have something that's an all in one. If you don't, then you have to use something like this apple cider vinegar rinse afterwards so that you can give your hair something that's a little bit slightly acidic or like neutral that will flatten those those sort of protective barriers on your hair back down. It's closed up, it's protected, it's smooth, and it's happy. They have in some obscure studies linked using soap, actual soap on your hair without a rinse to premature balding and like damage to your hair and all sorts of stuff. So we just thought, oh, we're not gonna mess around with that stuff. We're going to get like biodegradable, totally eco-friendly surfactants and we're gonna put them in a bar and we're gonna use shampoo bars in that way. So that's why we use the surfactants. Yeah, so surfactants have gotten a bad rap and like to some extent deservedly so because some of them are very harsh on the environment, mm. are not biodegradable and there are some studies that some of them them might have cancer links. SLS you've probably heard of tends to be the big one. So we look for ones that are biodegradable as naturally derived as possible. And they all have like terribly scary names. Like yeah. there's no such thing as a surfactant that's like, you know, fun natural bubbles. <laughs> it's always like, you know, one of them is called like sodium cocal isothionate. Like they all have these bananas names. Yeah. And so they sound a little scary, but they are just derived from like coconut oil. Like I saw one on, on one of the soap suppliers, they have like a, like a foaming oat. If you're using SLS, the, the suds are intense. So like it makes it seem like it's like really cleaning your hair and it is really cleaning your hair, but it might be over cleaning your hair <laughs> as well because you don't want to strip absolutely everything from your hair. Yeah. We get lots of suds with ours. I feel they work well for my hair. You feel they work well for yours and we have completely different hair types. So I was using soap for a while and uh, it, there was something off about my hair, but since I switched to the the bars or the shampoo bars have been a lot better. So yeah. there, is, there really is something to it. Ashley in Ottawa asks, do you make custom soaps? We're gonna have a part of our website where we will do custom soaps like for weddings or just for your house. Like if you want a purple and turquoise soap scented like lavender or juniper berries or you know, something. <laughs> yeah, we could talk about that and arrange that. Yeah, actually you can go to the footer of the web. There, so there's already a link on the website. Eh? Oh, there you go. Okay, <laughs> so we do on our website have, yeah. <laughs> Leah tends to do the website. You can check it out and tell us what you want and we will do it for you. Whitney in Maryland asks, what summer soaps do you have planned? Because I don't trust the USA to be vaccinated in time to enjoy the summer, frown face. I miss pools and beaches. So, Same girl. Well, if I know anything about Whitney, uh, I know she's gonna be really excited because we have some like water themed ones coming out. Yeah, we have a few different water ones. May is, which is not quite summer, but it's like the call of summer, you know? The month of May. We're gonna have fantastical mermaidy kind of theme soaps. Um, one of which will include a water design. And then I think in August, we have some more that are like summery drink inspired. And then we'll have another beach themed one. 
So that's when they will come out. And then we have, like, it's not all, like, water themes and stuff, but I know those are the ones that when you're... Whitney's most excited Oh yeah, about. that's why I mentioned that. Because <laughs> Flores asks, do you have Facebook? We do indeed. We do indeed have Facebook. Let me see if I can remember everything we have. We have Facebook, we have Twitter, we have Instagram, we have Pinterest, we have YouTube, obviously. I'm considering trying out TikTok, but I'm not sure yet. Nice. Yeah. So we have like a ton of things. We are at Tubby Tabby Soaps on all of those things. That's just our handle on everything. Definitely we're most active on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, I'd say, are like the top three. Yeah. Yeah, definitely follow us on our handles. That will be somewhere down there. Yeah. But if you want to participate in a future Q&A, because we are going to be doing this again in the future. Just let us know what your questions are in the comments. If you want to email us, you can email us at hello at tubbytabby.com. You can send us a message through any of our various social media, you know, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. Just let us know what your questions are and maybe we will answer them in the next Q&A video. Thank you for joining us. This has been actually really fun. <laughs> yeah, like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Smash the like button. There's a YouTuber that goes- Smash it. Yeah, there's a YouTuber that goes smash that like button or I'll smash you, which I think is a little aggressive. <laughs> yeah, make sure, because it, it does actually really help us out. It helps us with like the algorithm and everything. If you like, like and subscribe and all that stuff. So um, we are really appreciative when you do do that stuff and uh, until next time, have an awesome day. Bye. I'm, I'm a city girl, but you are from the boons. Yeah, we call it not May 2-4, May 2-4 <laughs> weekend. I love it.